Our chamber joining me now is Senator Alex Padilla of California. Senator, you're making your cross connection debut, so thank you for joining us. You just heard your colleague in the lower chamber from the House, Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal, seems to think that the minimum wage can live in the Senate. What do you say? Uh, well, thanks for having me, Tiffany. Yes, first of many, I hope. Uh, look, I think we will get the minimum wage done. The question is how. We know we need to do it soon uh, because there's so many families across the country uh, that are in dire need of this uplifting. Uh, so good news, the COVID package is moving clear by the House uh, last night or overnight. I will be uh, moving through the Senate this week. Uh, and there has to direct assistance to families uh, that is overdue, in my opinion. Uh, but for longer term uplifting of so many working families, I do support the minimum wage increase. Uh, we just had a hearing on the significance of raising the minimum wage in budget committee uh, this last week, chaired by Bernie Sanders. As you know, where the case was made, case was clear. When you give working families a raise to the $15 uh, dollars an hour, they're not going to be investing in stocks or buying beachfront property. Uh, they're going to be spending it. That's good for small businesses as well as good for families. So the question is how we get it done. The question is indeed, how do you get it done? And a lot of people are saying if the filibuster were not in play, it'd be able to pass the Senate easily. I know you support nuking the filibuster. A lot of people on your side of the divide, a lot of Democrats support this. What is the biggest hurdle right now to killing the filibuster? Uh, that's a, you know, a good question. A couple of our colleagues who aren't quite there yet on killing the filibuster, but even they've signaled uh, that uh, if we see the obstruction continue, they may have a change of heart. And you know, look, as you know, this is uh, my first year in the Senate. I recall all too well how uh, Republicans used the filibuster to obstruct a whole lot of progress when uh, President Obama was in office uh, at that time. So uh, I'm not in the mood for uh, obstruction while I'm here. Uh, I think a lot of my colleagues uh, share that sentiment. So I think the clock is ticking. If Republicans aren't going to be genuine about wanting to work uh, in a bipartisan fashion, uh, then we'll do what we have to do. But you know, we'll, we'll uh, uh, give it a go uh, in the first couple of months to see if we can convince Republicans to do what's right. Do what's right, not just for the country, but for their own districts. Let's look at this COVID relief package, for example. You know, astonishing that every House Republican voted against when COVID does not discriminate. Red states, blue states, everybody's been devastated by the pandemic. Everybody's been devastated, including undocumented immigrants. There are over 10 million in the country. Over 5 million are essential workers. They work as health care workers, grocery store workers on the front line. Um, one thing that happened is that people voted to not include undocumented immigrants in getting COVID relief. I know this is something near and dear to your heart. You introduced uh, or you're planning to introduce legislation uh, this week that was just announced. What is the thinking? Can this be undone in the Senate to see if undocumented immigrants can get some sort of support? Uh, in the COVID relief bill, given that many of them are also taxpayers. Uh, exactly. In my mind, that's uh, the, the just thing to do, the moral thing to do. We got a partial win by ensuring that citizen children of immigrant parents, even if they're undocumented, will continue to receive the assistance that they need because we're all in this pandemic together. So the big fix for all this is a pathway to citizenship, uh, not just for immigrants who are eligible, but even undocumented immigrants that have been living in the country, have been working, paying taxes. Uh, and so the, the, the my first bill, uh, as a U.S. senator that you just referenced, will provide a pathway to citizenship for all non-citizens that have been working as essential workers during this pandemic. You know, if I had a, a nickel for every tweet I saw, for every Facebook post, thanking, praising uh, essential workers throughout the pandemic, you know, let's translate that not into the thanks and platitude, but into action. They deserve security in the workplace and the comfort of a pathway to citizenship. They have earned it. Think of the essential workers in healthcare, in agriculture, in our grocery stores, so many sectors, helping keep communities safe during the pandemic and trying to keep the economy going. All right, uh, Senator Alex Padilla, you're the first Latino to chair the Senate Judiciary uh, Committees on uh, the Immigration Subcommittee on the Senate Judiciary. So you will definitely have to come back because there are a lot of immigration uh, issues that this Congress will face. So promise you'll come back. And thank you for joining me uh, today. We'll keep our eye on what happens in the Senate. And up next, 